Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Ask the Regulator, powered by Build My SOP.com. I am your host, founder, and CEO at buildmysop.com. And joining me tonight is former regulator Tom Mohan. So a little bit about me and my background and why uh, we're here to talk to you today. I have been working in the legal cannabis field since 2014, helping in operations and compliance. Actually, Tom and I used to work on the opposite sides of the fence together, um, and that's kind of how he came to be with us today um, as the VP of Regulatory Affairs at my SOP, and we are thrilled to have him. And I will let Tom let you know a little bit about his background. Sure, Katie. Uh, well, thanks, and I'm happy to be here with you. Uh, so I started my public safety career about 30 years ago, uh, working in EMS as an EMT paramedic, uh, and of course, working my way up through that. And then I started out in law enforcement uh, in 1998, uh, working for a couple different agencies, working patrol, narcotics, different areas of that. Where in 2014, I started working with the Marijuana Enforcement Division in the state of Colorado as uh, an investigator, uh, working my way up to being a supervisory investigator out of a field office uh, in the state of Colorado. So first, we're going to discuss what needs to be in a premises diagram. Well, there's a couple things that look at that, too. So if you have a two story licensed premise, do you control the stairway or is it used by other persons you know, within that unit? If that's the case, then you can't have a contiguous area within the licensed premise that you're actually leaving your license with your product to go back into your license, which is a major violation. So you can own several different units in it and only have one of them licensed to sell marijuana or cannabis in that particular area or have that particular area as the limited access area for your employees. That's why it's important to have each of these different areas outlined on your diagram as far as which one they are. Is it the licensed premise? Is it a restricted access area? Or is it a limited access area? Whoever's doing the background check is going to get very similar information, whether it's the state doing it or whether it's the local person doing it, as in New Mexico um, or other states like that. So what you're looking for is good moral character. Yes, that's a very broad term on what good moral character is. But what you're looking for is within a certain period of time is, you know, theft of property or money or drugs or drug crimes or drug felonies. All these things would preclude you from being uh, a licensed badge holder, whether it's in a state system background check or whether it's in a, a personal licensee background check. But they're looking for people that can be trusted with a very you know, high commodity that is still federally illegal, but is legal in states. So the states are being watched and scrutinized. So they wanna make sure that the, the employees that are working in this industry are being fair, honest, and above board. So that's what they're looking for in the background check. So I believe that th at least quarterly, everybody should go over emergency procedures, where to go, how to go, how to account for everybody, where to go with it. Bare minimum quarterly as far as managers, how do you operate the DVR? Go through quarterly and look at your fire extinguishers to make sure that they're all charged and in the green. Are your batteries and your exit signs up and running? It takes only a few seconds to press the button and, and make sure it works. I say minimum quarterly. I would like to see it monthly. That is the best way of doing it if you do it monthly. Quarterly at the minimum, because I understand everybody's busy. And once again, I'm the regulator training with the darkness, turn the lights off. How do you get out of these rooms? What if the netting is in the way? How do we get out of this stuff? And something happens that you've trained for? Hey, I've been through this. I know exactly what this is. I've seen this before. Or I haven't seen this before, but I, I know what to do because I've dealt with something similar. You know, when you're in that emergency situation too, some stuff just disappears. Um, it absolutely does. But the more you train, the the more it's an instinctive kind of response that you have. Right, so instead yeah. of thinking about it, like, hey, what do I do here? It's like, I know exactly what to do. And your mind just takes over and says, I need to do this, that, the next thing, because I've trained this so many times and I've gone over the standard operating procedure several times with my colleagues, my bosses, my managers, my owners that it's second nature and it's just, boom, you, you've done it. Um, the more you train, the more you train to be successful. Um, if you don't train to succeed, you've trained to fail. 